Russia's military conscription policy is about to get more strict. The Kremlin wants more men ready for battle, like these troops you see training here in Belarus. The tough new measures include electronic delivery of military call-up papers. Even if a conscripted Russian doesn't log on to look at those papers, the government will still consider him notified. And that makes evasion all but impossible. Let's bring in CNN contributor and former Moscow bureau chief Jill Doherty. And Jill, Russian officials, uh, I believe, are denying that the, this new bill kind of lays the groundwork for a fresh mobilization. But Russians must be concerned nevertheless here. Well, the indications that we have are that they indeed are because of what happened last September. You remember it was a partial mobilization and tens, if not hundreds of thousands of Russians left the country very quickly to avoid that. And it was you know, a bureaucratic nightmare because there was chaos, you know, long lines of traffic of people trying to get out. So that is the explanation that the Kremlin is giving, which is Nothing particularly exciting about this. This is a bureaucratic step to make sure we have a, a better uh, unified military register. And um, I think what we've got here, obviously, is uh, great sensitivity by the Kremlin, even about the word mobilization, because of what happened last year. And you can imagine that many young people would be very worried if there were another mobilization that could send them to Ukraine. Yeah, indeed. And the timing, I mean, the timing of this is important, too, because what we have seen, at least from our teams on the ground here, Jill, in eastern Ukraine, is, you know, we're seeing a military basically bleeding manpower uh, as well as weaponry and failing to make any major gains when we're talking about the east of Ukraine here. Correct. And then we also have what's expected to be this upcoming counteroffensive by the yeah. Ukrainians. And so Russia wants to rush as many people into the battle as they can. And uh, this is spring uh, mobilization time. They always, twice a year, call young men up. And, you know, it, it's an interesting thing. I was watching some video of the discussion in Parliament. There are two houses, lower and high and upper. And in the lower house, there was only one person who actually did not vote for this. And she's an interesting politician. She's the mother of Ksenia Sabchak, if you remember her, uh, who actually ran for president against Vladimir Putin a few years ago. And the, her name is uh, Lyudmila Narusova. And she said, look, we all know what this is about. And if you try to restrict the rights of Russians, you can only do that in time of war. And we're still not at that point in Russia where President Putin wants to uh, you know, describe it formally as a war, because that would mean martial law. So it's, it's an, a, a lot of sensitivity about this. Yeah, and a lot of sensitive internal politics, internal rifts as well seem to be playing out. Jill Doherty, great to see you. Thanks very much, Jill. There are international concerns about the welfare of Alexei Navalny, a prominent Kremlin critic who's currently in jail in Russia. The German government says it's very concerned about his worsening health after Navalny's spokesperson said he had severe stomach issues and has dramatically lost weight over the past two weeks. Vladimir Ashutkov is a Navalny ally and the executive director of the anti-corruption foundation established by Navalny himself. He told me he's getting a little information so far on Navalny's condition. Have a listen. Well, our information flow from the prison where he's held uh, is uh, not very informative. We learned uh, from his lawyer yesterday that an ambulance was called to the penal colony um, on the night from Friday to Saturday. We also learned that he lost eight kilos over the last uh, two weeks. Um, and we believe that his uh, health is in serious condition. It's something related to uh, stomach pain. He has never had um, stomach problems. And, uh, of course, given the background of his poisoning by Russian security services, this uh, leaves us very worried. What did the ambulance say? What, any sense of the diagnosis here? Um, he, the lawyer conveyed to us that when Navalny asked 
the doctor what the diagnosis was, his answer was uh, very elusive. So we don't have a diagnosis. Now, you hinted at Vladimir, which is something that I heard as well from the spokesperson, uh, who said, we do not rule out that the, at all this time in prison he could have been poisoned with something to make his health deteriorate slowly but steadily. Do not rule out, is there any evidence that he may have, po may have been poisoned? Would the symptoms that he has, would that suggest poisoning any more than acute stomach pain? What more are you learning? Um, we don't have any more information at uh, this time. Obviously, in the conditions of Russian prison, Russian authorities and Russian security services are quite free to operate mm. as they see fit. Um, and uh, given the history of Navalny's poisoning, we can't rule anything out. We don't have any evidence, any direct and concrete evidence about his poisoning. But you wouldn't, you don't rule it out, and it wouldn't surprise you. And and that order, would that come from the top? Would that come from uh, Putin? Would that come from Prigozhin? Where would that order? Who would it come from? Well, Prigozhin is a relatively recent, um, recent figure in the Russian public space. When Navalny was poisoned in twenty twenty. Um, a nerve agent Novichok was used, which was previously used in uh, Skripal poisoning in uh, the UK. Mm. These uh, agents are only available to security services and, and nobody can authorize use of such powerful uh, agents other than the uh, top uh, levels of Russian uh, government, which means Putin. And then, if it is coming from the top, and if it is coming from Putin, what then, Vladimir, does this tell us about the divisions, the pressures the Kremlin may be facing right now? Right now? Is it a sign of weakness or a sign of strength, you think, if, if, if this is what they are doing? And, of course, like you said, there is no I evidence. Don't want, I, I don't want to overstate, uh, I, and I don't want to speculate that mm. the poisoning is taking place. It's a hypothesis, quite plausible given uh, the history of uh, Navalny. Um, but um, I think uh, the, the recent uh, decisions that Russian government has been taking on making it easier to draft people into the army um, and uh, uh, introducing more and more repressive laws, uh, I think uh, it uh, all means that the Russian government understands that it cannot uh, achieve victory on the battlefield in Ukraine and it needs to tighten the screws within the country. So the pressure is mounting clearly. Uh, uh, one of the prison officers, I wonder you can shed a bit more light here, Vladimir. One of the prison officers told Navalny, this is according to the spokesperson, that a provocation was being prepared against him. Is, is this related to what is happening? And how would you interpret a provocation? Uh, Navalny has been subject to torture uh, mm. in during his two, um, two over two years in uh, prison. Uh, often uh, he an inmate is put into his room that has problem with hygiene or who has just been exposed to COVID. So this is one type of provocation. It's possible that something more sinister is being prepared. Um, that's why it's important for us to share all this information and hints that we get so that the world attention is uh, given to Navalny, who is arguably the most famous political prisoner in the world right now.